Hey everybody, how you doing? This is Dr. Carmen Bryant and this is Car Chronicles. How you guys doing? You doing all right? Good to see you. Sorry I missed the other day and my phone is so loud. But I'm sorry I missed the other day. I've been busy this week. You guys know we're getting closer to the conference. My conference is July 27th in um, Atlanta, Georgia at the Marriott Marquis on Peach Street. So I want to make sure that you guys come and see me because we're going to be talking about breaking generational cycles, breaking generational traumas. And so these videos that I've been doing lately are just a prelude, you know, giving you some topics of discussions for that conference. And some of you guys, you know, I can't afford therapy. I can't afford coaching coaching come to the uh, conference and I guarantee you that a lot of things um, that you're struggling with a lot of things that you need answers about you're gonna get there at the conference now I'm not gonna provide you with therapy obviously we can't we can't do therapy at a conference but you're gonna have people there they're gonna be able to answer your questions and the discussions that we're having is gonna dig deep down and hit some of the core roots of the issues that you're struggling with that's why today's topic I wanted to talk about Searching for love and all the wrong, searching for love and all the wrong places. All right, listen. So, you guys know number one, that, you know, a lot of women have a father wound. And so, you know, especially when you're coming out of a household that either doesn't have a father or you have a narcissistic father or a narcissistic mother, you know, you, you, like Tasha Lelaman said, this is the confession of a Christian girl. You guys get to meet her at the conference. But, like she said, I think she said it was an old African proverb that said that when you leave home hungry, you go into the world starving. And a lot of people, you know, and, and as you guys know, I am a uh, overcomer of narcissist abuse. Uh, but when you go into the world starving, you know, you're looking for love. Uh, and you're looking for what you didn't get in your home because at home is where the foundation is created for the rest of your life, you know, until you change it. But children go after what they're familiar with at home. So if children weren't receiving love, they weren't receiving affection, they weren't receiving attention, affirmation, you know, and applaud, accolade, something, you know, they're going to go look for that. You, as an adult, you're going to go look for that in everybody that you're me. You're trying to fulfill that in people that cannot fulfill. That's not their job. And so when you are growing up at home, you know, for most of you guys that are parents now, you know that your love is, is unconditional for your children. Unconditional does not mean that you agree with everything your child does because most of us do not agree with everything our children do. You know, if they do something wrong, there are consequences to your action. There are but that does not change the love a mother or a parent has for their child. Even if some of your children have ended up in prison, that doesn't change the fact that that's your child and you love them. Some of you guys are still trying to cover for them. You're still enablers, so you think that they did nothing wrong. And then some of them haven't done anything wrong in their prison. So I get it. I get it. You know, I'm not ignorant. But at the same time, some of you know, you know, that if they don't go to prison, they're going to die out here in the streets. You know, but you still love your child. Even Jeffrey Dahmer's father, and, and we know that he was a monster, even his father still loved his child, even though he knew and said, my son is a monster. He said that he knows what the, what, what he's done, you know, he embarrassed him and what he's done was wrong and how many people he's hurt, families he's hurt. But it didn't change the fact that that was still his child. He still loved his child. And some of you come from homes with narcissist parents where the love is conditional. The love is on the conditions that you do what I say. You do how I tell you to do it. You know, I will give you love and I will reward you with love and affection and a kind word when you do what I want you to do and how I want you to do it. And you are obligated to make me feel better about myself because my self-esteem is low. So whatever you do, it should always be to make me feel better. As long as you are achieving or making them look good. Some of you guys know you come out, you've got a college education, you're doing wonderful things within the community. They may know your name. They may doctor title. You own buildings, own properties, whatever, whatever. People know your name. But the thing about it is, is, you know, they love bomb you too. Your own parents love bomb you because you make them look good. They brag about you so you feel good like my parents are so proud of me or that narcissist parent, they're so proud of me. And, you know, they talk about me all the time. They ain't talking about you because they're proud of you. 
They're talking about you because they want to make sure that everybody knows that they're the parent. See, now, if you fail and something happens, you know, then you they're going to talk about you all right. They're going to smear your name. Uh, they're going to dog you out. And people are going to wonder, like, well, isn't that your child? You know, you know, I don't know where they were raised. They must have been raised out in the street. I don't know what was going on. See, they take the credit for the good things you do. But when you make mistakes, they can't handle those mistakes because you're making them look look bad. Just like growing up in the home. As long as your grades look good, you may have been a sports fanatic. You may have been the golden child. You know, and you did everything because they live vicariously through you. You were a, a pageant contestant. You, whatever you did in school, you were the star athlete, the football player, the, the captain of the football team, the captain of the world. You were Captain America. You were Wonder Woman. Whatever it is that you were doing, it made them look good. So the love was always on the conditions that you make me look good. You feel me. You bow down and do what I tell you to do regardless of what you want. It's not a matter of what you want. It's what I want and you feed into it. And so you leave out of your homes under the assumption that, and a lot of you become codependent and a lot of you become enablers. And so you go out into the world and you think that to make people love you or to have someone love you is to do everything that they say without your own thoughts that if i have my own thoughts or if i say no you're not going to love me anymore so a lot of you are dealing with rejection and abandonment issues a lot and then they were right there in the home with you and you're thinking to yourself well i wasn't rejected and abandoned they were right there in the home with me you were rejected and abandoned when it came to your emotional needs being met as a child Child can't meet their own emotional needs. You know, you're teaching them while they're young, but as a parent, you're there to love. When a baby cries, cry means something. I'm tired. I'm sleepy. I just want to be held. I want to be comforted. You know, something is hurting me. And that parent becomes that source, the source of comfort. You know, to pat the baby to sleep, to give the baby a hug, to change. So you're, the baby's needs is being met by the parent. And for a lot of narcissists, believe it or not, they look at the child as being too needy. How can a baby be too needy? They're supposed to be too needy. They're babies, you know, but they look at the child like you're getting all the attention. People are giving you all the attention, not giving me all the attention. See, when you were pregnant, people were giving you the attention, but they were, you know, the baby. And that's how the narcissist was. That's why a lot of them like to be pregnant because they were getting the attention. Now, when the baby was born, the baby is now too needy. They look at the baby as being too needy. Isn't that, isn't that a deranged way of thinking? Just dysfunctional? But the baby gets more attention than me. You know, everybody pays attention to the baby. What about me? You know, and that's why you do have some a lot of CPS cases with narcissistic parents because they don't understand why is everybody giving this child attention. I need attention. I need fuel. And I'm having to give this fuel to this baby is draining me. You know, and a lot of them, they have their children taken away or they have CPS in their homes. You know, so a lot of you come from homes like that. A lot of you ended up in foster care because of the fact that narcissist parent was competing with you as an infant, as a toddler. Come on, y'all. You know there's something ain't right about these people. You know, I don't care if you are dating a narcissist, if you have family members that are narcissists, sometimes it has to get to the point where you have to break the cycle. And remember, I keep repeating the same thing. In order to break the cycle, you have to do something that has never been done before. And sometimes that means having to go no contact. Sometimes that means having to distance yourself from the people that hurt you the most, but the people that are closest to you. And the people that are closest to you sometimes are your parents that set the foundation, that created the foundation, and you went out into this world dysfunctional. You know, you are now just learning that this stuff is not right. This is this is not right. This was not even you had your own children and now you're looking at your own children thinking to yourself, how can somebody have treated a child this way? How can somebody have been so distant? How can you and you're thinking, how can this have be? How can this have been done? How, how can someone be this way? But you're thinking out of the mindset of a person that has, does not have narcissistic personality disorder. You're trying to put your good traits on this narcissist with the expectation that I just don't understand how. And you're trying to explain it. I'm trying to get them to understand. They don't want to understand. All they know is, is that you need to serve me. You're my child. You serve me. It's not about you and meeting your needs. You're supposed to meet my needs as a child. Child can't meet an adult need. And then you go through life trying to meet everybody's need and do everything for everybody. And you, you're wearing yourself out, burning the candle on both ends. You wonder why you are drained because you're trying so hard to please people. Stop trying to please people. You know, stop trying to please people. They're going to be all right. They're going to be all right. 
But Lisa, that's why you need to be at my conference. Register for the conference at overcomingnarcissistabuse.ticketleap.com or send me an email, drcarmenbryan at outlook.com, and I'll send you an invoice. We got to get all the names in. We got to get the head count in so we can do this at the conference. Don't miss it. Be there. Come on and support me so I can travel and go to different places to meet you guys and come out there to meet me.